Yo, yo, it's your boy Jay Boogie back with a back to back video today. Make sure you guys don't forget to like and comment under this video on this TikTok. And also don't forget to go to my YouTube channel to like and comment on that and subscribe to my channel. So, I will be talking about who has been the best small forwards throughout the 23-24 uh, NBA season. So, at at number four on my list, I got no other than the claw himself, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, pretty much played 68 games throughout the season. Uh, you know, of course, when healthy, when he's a when he's fully available, honestly, in this clip, you know, winning impact, impactful player. Um, doesn't like I say, one of the players, you can't take him out of his rhythm. You don't force him to doing a lot of bad things because he play at his own pace, his own way, his own style. And, you know, of course, him being one of the better mid-range scorers in the league and pretty much throughout the past decade. And, um, you know, Kawhi Leonard, you know, like I say, he can easily get you 25, 26 points every single night, simply just because of the fact that most of his damage comes from the inside, especially with the membranes. And then he can give you like two blocks and like four steals any given time just because he's such a great two way player when he's fully healthy and when he's fully available. And, you know, of course, you know, his biggest, biggest strength on offense is obviously, I just said it, like I've always been saying, his membranes, but you gotta understand. When you have a great mid-range game, it opens up your game even more because now you already can shoot the three. You got the three-point shot, and you got the ability to drive in and finish to dunk or, you know, to lay up or float or whatever you got to do, and the ability to draw fouls. So that's why for him, he can easily get 10 straight points for mid-range and then get, like, knocked down three to four threes just because he got that type of versatility and expansion in his offensive game. And of course on defense, you know how to read defense. Um, when he on offense, and then when he plays defense, you know how to read the offense. And you know got one of the biggest hands. So you know he, he's one of the top defenders. You don't want to play around too much because he can easily knock you up and get a steal just like that. So I right, said so also in this club when Kawhi is fully available and healthy. Um, you know, still is an all-around star. Uh, can finish at the rim. Dunks, layups, mid-range game, the three-point shot, um, the ability to take over in crunch time as well. And I did put his playoff stats in this because he's going to play two games in the first round against the Mavericks. I felt like they rushed him back, and he was looking real stiff. And then he only averaged like 12 games throughout the two games he played. So, so outside of that, though, shout-out to Kawhi Leonard. He deserved to be number four on my list. And at number three, no other than King James, LeBron James, Oh, um, man, for his age to to <laughs> keep doing what he's been doing, breaking records, putting up, you know, historical numbers, um, still scoring at a high rate, playing at a high rate, finishing at the rim at a high rate. Um, and the biggest thing of that is just his health and his durability is, is out this world. It's, it's OD. And, you know, of course, still had one of the greatest IQ for the greatest IQ of the game and still a great playmaker. I think he averaged just around like eight assists per game this season. So um I mean, for LeBron, you know, honestly, early in this clip, you know, when we watch it, when he when he gets on that heat checking three point line, it it's already O D because he's already great at driving into the basket and finishing because he got the strength to draw fouls. And then he, I feel like his most underrated part of his game is his post fadeaways because LeBron can be very, very out at the mid range, just close to the three point line, and knock down that post fadeaway. Just, I feel like he did it. I feel like he does that to be trolling. <laughs> but regardless of that, his post fadeaways is OD because you can play him at the right spot on defense, but that post right away he do, you just can't deny it because he knocked those down. And he usually knocked those down when the game be like back and forth or be in crunch time will be really intense. So you can't sleep on his post right away abilities. But outside of that, still one one of the greatest all-round players in the league. 
for this decade and the last decade. And, you know, honestly, they got out the first round against the uh, Nuggets, gentleman sweep, but he still put up great numbers and pretty much carried the Lakers in that first round outside of him and AD, but he still put up great numbers. So for him to play at, the, at this level still, and you see what he did within the, well, with the Olympics, just moving gracefully, athletic, all of that, you know, it was just, hey, that's all diet, root, workout routine, durability, you know, staying in shape, all of that is such a key factor to why he's still doing what he's doing. So he does, he deserved to be number three on my list. And number two, no other than KD Durantula, another great scoring season, efficient shooting. Honestly, in this clip, man, you know, I mean, it's an all-around score. Uh, three levels, some say five levels, but three levels. Um, you know, inside, mid-range, <clears throat> the pull-up three, the hezzy pull-up three, the hezzy pull-up mid-range, the pull-up mid-range. He got so much offensive scoring bag and his ability, and you already can't block his jump shot half of the time. So, you know, like I said, he played the game so gracefully. It's smooth. It's easy to him. Just like I said about Kawhi Leonard, these type of guys, you can't just throw off their own pace. It's, you know, it's, it's too easy for him. But, but more on so on KD because he's always been like that throughout his whole career of being fluid, making stuff look smooth and easy. And, you know, I just feel like Kevin Durant, man, I think, I think he still has an average below under 25. Probably since his rookie year. Yeah, probably since his rookie year. Because, I mean, like I said, dude is one of the greatest scores ever seen in league history. And still one of the great scores we have to this day. So, you know, like I said, he still put up great numbers in the first round against the um, Timberwolves, even though they got swept. And not too many people can brag saying, oh, I swept KD. Anthony Edwards can talk all the trash he can because he did just that. <laughs> But, um, you know, like I said, man, Kevin Durant, man, still playing at high level, elite level, still playing the way he does, coming off of the killing injuries. He suffered when he was playing with the uh, the Brooklyn Nets. No, he suffered the killer's injury playing with the um, Golden State Warriors when he got hurt in the playoffs. I think it was against the Clippers. But outside of that, man, KD deserved to be number th- <laughs> deserved to be number two on my list. And honestly, you seen this clip. And at number one, the champion himself, no other than Jason Tatum. Pretty much he's been dominant within his own perspective of how he played throughout the season. Um, pretty much being a top five, top six MVP discussion throughout the whole season. And then, you know, the one thing I love about his game, obviously outside of the scoring ability that he does, is his rebounding. You know, he played up to his height. He played with his size. He don't try to play too big, he don't try to play too small, but he plays exactly what he need to be. And to be a great rebounder, the way he is, is incredible. And then how he can play defense. And then he 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 can easily have mismatches anytime he wants to because of the fact that he can put his he, he play he he normally plays three. He is a small four, but then he can play the power four position. And you know the mismatch of the bigs, you know, I say he got the quick first step. Got one of the best side step three point uh, shots in the league. You know, he loses ball handling skills and out this world. And his quick first step onto bigger bigs, pretty much bigs that don't have quick feet. And, you know, he, he used it to his advantage. And then, honestly, in this clip, man, this dude can pulsarize anybody just like that in a heartbeat out of nowhere. Great finisher. Got better at finishes throughout, throughout his career. And he only 26. I'm 26. <laughs> but. You know, shout out to Jason Ted and Weather Zerds who win the NBA championship. And pretty much, I think he has like a double double throughout the whole playoffs. So, that's my list of who has been the best small fours throughout the league throughout the 23 24 season. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you got to do. I love you guys. And Jay Boogie is out.